Is it okay now? Do you see uh, your, uh, our topic today will be about uh, fracture representation uh, using borehole images? So uh, nowadays, borehole image become a very important uh, tool. Uh, uh, lots of applications uh, using borehole images, uh, and sometimes because of uh, uh, the cost of core and the recovery of core uh, borehole image become uh, a very important uh, uh, alternative for uh, for having core and uh, it come in the first position for borehole image utilization worldwide uh, fractures so most of customers now uh, borehole image has lots of of utilization uh, depth determination, structural analysis, stratigraphic uh, analysis, value current uh, analysis, and lots lots of uh, utilization, secondary porosity uh, uh, evaluation. But most of, uh, of customers, the use uh, and operators, they utilize a borehole image uh, mainly for the sake of uh, fractures because uh, borehole image is a unique tool in identifying uh, fractures and know the characterization of uh, these uh, fractures. Is it open? Is it closed? Uh, the geometry of the fractures, uh, as we will uh, see in the coming uh, slides. But why we are uh, we want to uh, study fractures? Yeah, I mean, uh, be, be before any uh, topic, before going uh, into any topic, and going in the details of this aspect, uh, we have to ask ourselves firstly uh, why uh, fractures symbol simply uh, for production. So for the sake of production, uh, there is a lot of applications for uh, studying fractures. Uh, we will uh, list it uh, in the upcoming uh, slides, but mainly for uh, production enhancement as fractures, it can uh, enhance the production, increase the porosity and permeability, and hence we can get more uh, production. There is also uh, side, uh, side effects for the fractures that can uh, impact the production negatively. So it can bring water from a level to, uh, to the hydrocarbon level and increase the water cut in the reservoir. In this case, it will uh, affect the production negatively, as we will, we will mention. Uh, but let's firstly talk about the main uh, utilization for the fractures, the main importance for the fracture, which is uh, increasing the uh, production to increase the production of the, uh, the reservoir that we have. So our agenda for today, uh, we will firstly know what is the fractures, uh, how the fractures form. Then we will uh, see different types of the fractures from borehole image, uh, starting by the natural fractures, which is the fractures uh, occurred by uh, stress, deformation, faulting, folding, uh, by geological uh, tectonism and by geological events, which is we call it natural fractures. Then we have another kind of fractures, which is induced fractures. This is induced by drilling operation. We will see how these fractures uh, look like uh, in the borehole image. And we will uh, explain how to differentiate between natural fractures and induced uh, fractures. Uh, fracture aperture, uh, which one, this one is going more details, more uh, investigating the fracture, zooming in, 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 in inside the fractures and see the width of the fracture itself, which is the fracture apertures, see how it looks, how we can get uh, evaluation for this aperture, uh, quick evaluation from uh, these apertures or widths of the fractures based on the image. And uh, we will warp up and summarize uh, 
the benefits and the applications uh, of uh, fractures, uh, evaluation and fractures interpretation from uh, the borehole image. Fractures is simply, uh, as we see here, fracture is not only in the rock, but here uh, there is a big uh, department in, in medicine for uh, bones, fractures and stuff, and also in uh, metallurgy and in, uh, in alloys, uh, fracturing, cracking. So fracturing is not only in the rock, but now we will concentrate uh, and this is one of the uh, implication in oil and gas industry. We will uh, focus in fractures of in, in the rock, in the formation, in the geological formation. Simply, it's a cracking or separation, uh, as you see in, in, in the slide. So we see cracking because of stress applied. Deformation has been applied in, a, in the rock unit that lead to form this uh, open, this spacing, this separation uh, between different uh, and make it like compartments or uh, make like fragmentation for uh, the rock unit. So it can be big, it can be like small cracks, it can be like fissures, it can, uh, it can be like different shapes based on the uh, amount of the stress that has been applied uh, and based on the mechanical loading and the unloading in this uh, rock unit, and based on the rock rheology itself of, uh, of this rock unit, is uh, rock rheology means the competency of the formation itself. Is it brittle? Is it uh, semi-brittle? Is it ductile? Is it very hard? Is it uh, contain fluids? So because uh, is it porous? Is it not porous? All this stuff will be function of the fracturing mechanism itself. So uh, the rock rheology or uh, or the rock competence itself will uh, will uh, reshape uh, the fracture, uh, and based on it will be the also in a combination for sure in a combination of the stress applied in this rock unit. Fracture and fault. Uh, as a geologist, we have we we uh, we need to know. I, I don't know. Maybe we have several uh, backgrounds here uh, listening to uh, to us. But for 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 geologists, uh, you have to differentiate between uh, fracture and uh, fault. That simply the difference between fracture and fault is the displacement. Yani, uh, Fractures, it's a cracking, uh, but without displacement. When we have like this, uh, if we have this uh, pigmatite vein, so see this, the displacement between this and this, this is what we call it faulting. So fault is a fracture, but when we have a displacement in this fracture, so we call it uh, fault. So fault, is a fracture associated with displacement. But what we will focus now, we will focus more in uh, the fracture itself. Faults, it, it has lots of interpretation based on seismic and based on images as well. Uh, big uh, category and big aspect uh, fault interpretation, either from seismic or from uh, images. But here we will focus in on uh, fractures. I just wanted to highlight the main contrast between uh, fracture and uh, fault, which is mainly and simply is the uh, displacement, the movement itself. Okay. We can see fractures in, 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 in a different uh, stuff, from different stuff, either from outcrop or from core, as we see this one, slab core, or uh, we see it from image, from borehole image, as we will explain in the upcoming uh, slides. And also there is uh, cameras, downhole cameras. It can be run inside uh, the hole and we can 
see uh, the fractures. Simply, the fractures, the importance of the fracture is to provide uh, porosity and permeability along these uh, weak planes or along these separation. So this can be uh, applied or, or this can be utilized uh, in oil industry or for hydrocarbon uh, production and also for aquifers. So the study of fractures either for uh, getting water for aquifers or getting oil and gas. So why? Because fractures make uh, permeability, make flow for the fluid. Maybe fractures, it's not homogeneous uh, spacing. The fracture itself, we can see like some areas which is big. So this one, we call it the, uh, the aperture, which is this one, the aperture, which is the, the width of, 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 of the fracture itself. And another area which is getting narrower, we call it a spirits, which is like closing or tight tightness inside the, the, fr the fracture plane itself. Fracture is a plane. Sometimes we can see the fracture is open. And then we can, it vary from uh, a place to another uh, place. So here, I wanted to show you before we start to, this is uh, an image, this is the camera video, but this is not like electrical image, this is downhole camera, uh, it can be uh, run inside the hole to uh, see what is inside, usually the, maybe it's not very common during our uh, drilling and exploration phase, but maybe uh, it will be later on, and also, it's a very common uh, in, uh, in aquifers and uh, getting water. So if, if you can see this one here, I'll try to you see this. This is, this is a fracture inside, inside the hole itself. So this is the real 3D shape of, of the hole. And this one, it's very clear here. So it ends up by like, curved stuff here, and this is the shape of the fracture inside a borehole from uh, displayed or visualized by uh, camera, by downhole uh, camera. To see uh, how, how would the fracture look like from the borehole image, firstly, we need to understand uh, the image visualization or the image representation. Now we will start talking about borehole images, uh, wireline borehole images, and mainly electrical borehole images. Uh, so this is the shape of the hole, like cylinder. In image, we see the 3D, we see it in a 2D. So we move from the, the, the 3D here to the 2D view. This one means that we have an inclined feature like this one. So, and this is might be inclined bit or fracture. It can also be like this shape. You will see it as this one, we call it uh, sine wave or we call it uh, amplitude or we call uh, sinusoid, this is stuff. So whenever you get high inclination, so maybe we have uh, something, if it's horizontal, this one will be like a flat stuff. And if it's inclined as much as the inclination is, is, is getting higher, this amplitude, it's getting the, the, the spacing between the bottom and top or between the top of, of, of this sine wave and bottom of the sine wave, uh, it will be higher. So whenever you have something like this one, this is means that you have inclined feature or you have Feature with, with is dipping feature with high dip, like fracture and folds. And the trough, this one we call it beak of sinusoid, and this one we call it trough. That the spacing between uh, the beak and trough is representing the amount of dip. And 
the orientation of the trough, the referring of the trough, this one is referring to the direction of the. So there is a function to calculate based on the whole diameter and the height of this sinusoid, we can get the amount of dip. And to get the direction of dip, this is simply the trough from here. This is orienting toward north. If we display it in a 2D, you will find this trough, which is referring to the, for example, here in this case, west direction. So this is means that I have this inclined surface, whatever this inclined surface, it could be uh, fault, it could be fracture, could be inclined bit, different stuff. Uh, so we represent this one by dip angle, the amount of, I don't know, uh, my camera is working okay. Do you see me? You can confirm. Uh, Hello? So this is this is the sir this is the horizontal. So the angle between this one and the horizontal will be the dip angle. And in which direction is referring to you or referring to me? This is the direction of, of dip. So this is means for any any bit we have the direction of bit could be this one and this if the, if, if this one is the dip will be decreasing or increasing from the horizontal so when we when we come back here you will see that this one is an inclined bit with with this dip amount which is this one and the west direction it's it's referring to which direction is it uh, so, so it's two component, dip angle and dip direction. Why I, I spent some time in this slide because this slide is very important. It, um, it, it yani to to understand the image, to understand because the image, the borehole image, we move from uh, the 3D scale to to the 2D scale. We get the 3D feature from here and display it in a 2D stuff. So if you understand this one, it will be uh, much easier in understanding lots of uh, features uh, from the borehole image. Hope it's, hope it's clear. Okay, coming back to the fractures, we have uh, two uh, ways of studying fracture or uh, evaluating fractures or characterizing fractures either by visual inspection, visually to see and trace the fracture. Is it high angle? Is it low angle? Is it open? Is it closed? Opening and closing is very important. One of the important stuff uh, to understand about the fracture, it's fir firstly to see if this fracture is open, it's gonna make some impact with me or no. Uh, and also the angle of the fracture itself, is it high angle? Is it low angle? So this is what we call it visual uh, inspection or يعني, by eye to see how this fracture look like. There is also more, more sophisticated and some derived interpretation based on uh, software and equations, which we call it computer assisted evaluation. The main factors, so to, do, to, study, to study fractures, one of the important, there is some important aspects we have to uh, look for, which is the resistivity of mud. As we will see, as, as you will uh, see in the upcoming slides, the mud itself is very important, even for the type of the borehole image. So it will define the type of the borehole images that you will use, which type of the image will you will use, and the appearance of the fracture itself, it will be depend mainly on the mud uh, resistivity. Is it oil-based mud or water-based mud? Water-based mud is conductive material. Oil-based mud is resistive material. 
the resistivity RxO, which is the resistivity of the flushed zone, because we image all image most of the images. Uh, I'm talking about wireline images, are reading in the flushed zone. As we know that we have flushed, so we have flushed zone, and we have invaded zone, and we have uninvaded zone. So most of borehole images are reading and investigating in the area of flushed zone. That's why the resistivity of the flushed zone is very uh, important uh, for us. And finally, the fracture geometry itself. How it looks like, is it continuous? Is it discontinuous? Is it high angle? Is it low angle? And how much is covering the borehole itself? Is it covering the entire hole or some of the hole? Uh, and so on. So usually we categorize the fractures based on opening into open fracture, simply is open like, uh, and partially filled, which some areas is uh, open and the other is uh, mineralized or healed or filled by um, mineral and totally healed or mineral field, which is totally closed or tight one. And there is another category we call it, uh, this is usually dominant in carbonate. We call it solution enhanced or foggy fractures, which is like mechanical fractures. And then by action of fluids, maybe underwent to some of the genetic pro processes that uh, make some dissolution uh, in some parts of these fractures. That's why we call it uh, solution enhanced uh, underwent some disintegration and some area we call it uh, solution or enhanced uh, solution enhanced or vagi or so, some people call it also vagular fracture. Okay, uh, if we want to uh, classify uh, the fractures in terms of the drive factors for this fracture, what, what, what cause these fractures? Uh, so we have two main categories. So most of our investigation and in borehole images, and for all of the people uh, work in, uh, mainly in exploration, they study two stuff, exploration and drilling. They study two stuff, uh, natural fractures and induced fractures natural fracture or mechanical hydraulic fractures induced or mechanical hydraulic same same name natural fractures from name natural or geological fractures it it came uh, it came by uh, geological deformation uh, stress impact so um, so this is mechanical loading and the unloading and appear in the image as uh, full or like this sine wave stuff so you so this fracture will be like this, inclined fracture or inclined surface. Fracture is a plane, is inclined the plane. And this is our hole. So when you see if this fracture inside your hole, you will see in the image this shape. This is very important slide as well, because in this slide, we will differentiate between the natural fractures and induced fractures. So how we can differentiate based on the shape of the fracture itself, if it's like this one, full sinusoid, we call it natural fractures. If it's like line stuff, two line stuff, 180 degree apart, like this one, or it happened in this area and this area, this is 100 degree 80 uh, apart. Uh, I'm talking 180 degree direction. So if, يعني, for example, if this one, in, in east, this one will be in, in west. And if this one in north, this one will be in south. So it's all in, in, in the opposite. So this is the difference between the natural fractures and mechanical or hydraulic fractures. Natural fractures, as, a, as, as, as mentioned, it, uh, it came by uh, geological deformation, stress deformation, faulting, folding, and uh, stuff like this. Uh, mechanical hydraulic fracture is it's induced by either induced by drilling operation, uh, by drilling fluid, by mud weight. That's why it cracks, or it breaks the formation, or by fracking uh, hydraulic fracking by 
action. So usually this one, it happened by drilling operation and by mud impact that make uh, these shapes happen like this. This one natural, this one induced. Maybe there is some stuff uh, randomly oriented, uh, like small joints, small fissures. We call it polygonal or stenosis or a chicken wire because it's like uh, this randomly oriented stuff like this. This is also came by mechanical loading and unloading and some uh, deformation or maybe the rock was loaded. We have some loading and then by exposure or sub aerial exposure, uh, the rock uh, beca became exposed. So that's why we start seeing this cracking on, uh, on it. Uh, so it, uh, it will take this a chicken wire uh, shape, we call it polygonal uh, fractures as well. Very important to differentiate in the image. This one based on electrical image. Uh, we have conductive fracture and resistive fracture. Let's firstly to know what this shape mean. The image, the electrical image, or we call it electrical image or resistivity image or micro resistivity image. The dark stuff means this one is conductive. Whenever you are getting lighter means resistive. So if this one, for example, two ohm meter, this would be 10 ohm meter, 20 ohm meter or higher. So, and here in this case, vice versa, this one is resistive. This is resistive stuff, which means maybe uh, 100 ohm meter, 200 ohm meter, and the surrounding stuff will be less in resistivity. So might be two ohm meter, three ohm meter, and so on. So first, uh, the coloration or this color scale of, of the image, dark means conductive or low resistivity or more conductivity. And this light colors means resistivity or high resistivity. Usually this dark color here came by that this fracture was open fracture like this one. This slide just for visual correlation. It's not the same interval. I'm just putting some uh, a, yani, uh, capture from outcrop to visualize, to understand, to imagine. So whenever you have like fracturing, this is a normal outcrop fractures, very well developed and nice one. Whenever these fracture, you can imagine down hole, subsurface, this filled by what we are using in drilling, we are using mud. So these, this open spaces will be filled by mud. That's why it will appear like you see here, it will appear conductive. So all these conductive stuff, so we will see, we'll, again, this dark stuff is conductive and this resistive uh, white one is resistive. So in the background, it's the main rock itself and all these dark lines, it come by cracking or by fracturing open stuff filled by drilling mud. The background rock is resistive like this one and these dark stuff or open stuff filled by mud, drilling mud, which is conductive. We are talking here about water, water based mud because water based mud is conductive and oil based mud is resistive. That's why we call this one as conductive fractures. If we came back here, this one means that it's white means it's uh, resistive stuff. Resistive is filled by mineral. Mineral like calcite, quartz, all these minerals are a beer resistive in the image. That's why we call it resistive fracture or mineral field fractures. Another example for, uh, for open fractures. So now, all this white background, this is the bedrock itself, and this is the fractures. So you can see a bunch of fractures over here, like fracture corridors. We call it this one, like corridors of fractures. Uh, investigation of this one is, will be very important. So as we will see, we will see, we will study 
the fractured cell see how many fractures we have we can uh, if we if if we if we trace we can trace many of the stuff we have here we have lots we have lots of fractures we can trace lots of fracture either as continuous or discontinuous we have this one we can continue to this all these we have this nice one here all these are fractures. So we have lots of fractures here. Important to know this one is conductive fracture because it's dark. And we, we need also to understand the direction of these fractures. As we mentioned, if, if, if you remember before in the slide, I mentioned that if we have a sine wave like this one, sine wave will have a top, and bottom. From where we get the direction, we get it as, as mentioned from the bottom of, uh, of the feature. So, and here, here, here is the direction. So any oriented image, you will see it from zero to 360 or north, east, west, south, and so on. So as we mentioned, we changed this direction To be like this, yani from 3D, we make it 2D. So now, to understand this, you will come to this one. You will see this line in which direction. So for, for, for this example, it became it's between 120 and 150. So it will be 130 degree. So 130 degree, it's between east and south which means that this fracture directed toward, uh, or the dip direction of this fracture is toward the southeast direction, which is this direction. One of the, uh, one of the stuff also we, uh, we can understand about the fracture to understand the tectonic regime of the area, uh, which is the strike of the fracture. The strike is the perpendicular to the true dip, or true dip is perpendicular to the strike. The strike, if we have the true dip of the fracture is southeast, so the strike of this fracture will be north, east, southwest. A strike, if, if, if you have a layer like this one, for example, this is a layer, and this one, you can imagine that this, this, is, this is a horizontal line and this one is dipping in this direction. So, so we know that the angle between this one, this one, it's the true dip, true. So the, the, the line, the imaginary line or the imaginary line perpendicular to this one, we call it strike. Sorry, my, uh, typing so this one is the strike and this is the true dip so fracture is a plane as well if we know that this plane is dipping toward this direction so this one will be the strike of this uh, of this fracture so whenever you get many strikes like this if you have many fractures you will get many uh, strikes also in maybe in another area you have some uh, some fractures and then you you will find the strike also it's the same direction in the same area or when you bite you study another area you can see that uh, strike is in another direction so you can start see uh, how the tectonic clustering or the tectonic direction it changes from an area or the stress direction it changes from an area to another area maybe you have some study wells here, you will see the strike of this fracture over this area. And another study well, studied well here, you will see the strikes. Maybe you have different location, you start to correlate uh, this strike or this direction uh, from uh, field, maybe scale of some wells or a scale of field or a scale of concession or a scale of, scale of area. So this is the importance of this representation. This is also, we call it dip representation. We represent fracture dip direction, the true dip direction, and the, and the angle of the fracture, and the direction of the fracture, and strike of the fracture.
fracture can be you can see it in, in, in a different shapes as this is this is this is a conductive fracture see uh, here all usually the fractures it cut the the layer so this is the normal layering you have normal layering and this fracture it cut the layer it bre breaks uh, the layers that's why you see this fracture it can be in a different angle, different shapes as we see this one. See how many fractures over here and how many fractures over there. Maybe the fractures truncated to the layer itself. So you will see this fracture and die or truncated uh, because the stress it should, uh, released uh, in this one. So it only cracks or maybe the, uh, the deformation, if, if you remember uh, when at the beginning we mentioned about the rock rheology itself and the rock competency, maybe this uh, rock unit is more competent to fracturing than these layers. Or maybe because of many layering over this one, this one is normal layering, bidding, normal bidding. And this is the fractures. So uh, I was trying to use uh, the pointer, but um, I was talking about this one. Uh, this one, you have normal layer, and this one is a fracture, and the fracture truncated over uh, this uh, at this level. Maybe you have another. See this one, also this fracture, this these layers, and maybe some uh, uh, opening and cracking along the, the the layer itself, and then we start having another uh, fracture like this one. So usually, if, uh, uh, one of the important criteria to uh, to know the fracture, it which is, which is the angle, the fracture, the the fracture usually high high angle, uh, as you see here. So the surrounding layering, which was the, the normal la layering of the strata, will be like this one, and the fracture usually will be higher angle and higher sinusoid, as we see here. Another criteria and this, uh, another uh, example or another snapshot for a fracture and this one, uh, as we mentioned before, we have this kind of vagular fracture or vagi fracture or dissolution fractures, which is usually happen in carbonate, in carbonate rocks, uh, carbonate, lime, uh, I mean limestone, dolomite, dolomitic limestone, whatever. So you start see uh, this stuff here, so you see if you, you can, we can trace, see this one here. We can trace this one. So this is what we call vagular fracture. How, we, how, how, how would we identify this one? It's not like sharp line, like what we mentioned before, uh, what we showed before, it's usually uh, vagular stuff. So this one is vags, as you see. This one is vugs over here and vugs here. So whenever this one, this vugs is aligned to uh, a, a direction like this one, we call it uh, vagular uh, fractures because maybe it's there, there was a, a little bit fracking along this plane, for, exa uh, for example, and then the solution came, it become doing this uh, bad, this uh, vaginess along the fracture itself. And this is usually happen in the carbonate. So we, we will have this phase of vaginess and then move to this phase of uh, vagular fracturing or connected vugs in the shape of the fracture as we see here. The second item, which is, or the second uh, type of natural fracture, natural fractures, which is uh, mineralized fracture or uh, resistive fractures why why we call it resistive because this also is not the same interval this is we just i do this for uh, correlation for visual correlation this one from core uh, we have fractures like this filled by uh, this one filled by calcite uh, and quartz so you will see this white stuff which is uh, quartz and calcite and, and, and as a, this this is the resistive uh, resistive mineral here also you see this whiteness in in the image it, it, it looks very sharp and very white around which is the resistive fracturing the same is this the same shape but this one it's not uh, it's not very conductive as as we see here 
see how many uh, conductivity that we have. In this case, it will be uh, in this case, in case of uh, resistive fractures, it will be white, sharp, and usually this one filled by uh, minerals, as you see uh, this white colors over it. This is another example for resistive fracture. See, this, this is the fracture, very clear, and all this white, it's the mineral filling of this fracture. It's not open uh, fracture. So all uh, the previous slide I showed electrical image. Electrical image, we can have uh, water bismuth image, and we can have oil-based mod image. So, and this is the cases of the fracture, either open or mineral field or partially field. I summarize this table to make you understand uh, how to see the, uh, the fracture in different types of image. If we have water-based water uh, mod image, so all the filling of the fracture will be a drilling mod. So whenever it's a conductive fracture, the open fracture will appear conductive and dark, if it's a mineral field, this is as the normal cases as I have shown. Uh, mineral field will be resistive. If it's partially filled, will be discontinuous and conductive. In case of OBMI or electrical, OBMI electrical, these types are water bismuth electrical image or oil bismuth electrical image. If it's uh, if, if it's resistive, uh, sorry, resistive will be white. This one, it's mistyping. Resistive will be white here. So uh, the resistive will be white. And re resistive will be light as well. So this one also will be light. Both are light. This one, discontinuous, resistive, and it will be light. So everything in, 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 in OBMI will, will be light, will be like this one. If we have this one, this is not OBMI. But all the fracture types on OBMI will be uh, white like this one because the, the mud filling, uh, it will be resistive mud. Resistive mud, all kind of, so whenever the fracture is open or closed, everything will be resistive. Why? Because uh, the drilling mud is resistive. So if it's open fracture will be filled by this resistive mud, so it appear resistive. If it's closed, the fracture by, by mineral and mineral is resistive, so it will appear resistive as well. We have this case. Uh, if we have, so how to know uh, in case, يعني, maybe someone ask if in case of uh, oil, uh, oil uh, based mud, uh, oil based mud image, how, how would we know uh, if it's open or closed? We'll go to the acoustic image. The acoustic image is based on uh, ultrasonic, uh, based on so, uh, sonic. So here you can directly uh, mention if it's open. It's open, closed, it's closed. You, 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 you are quite sure about opening or closing. Low amplitude will be open. High amplitude will be closed. In case of mineral field, will be uh, high amplitude will be closed. And uh, open is open. It's clearly defined. And for sure, if it's partially filled, it will be, or partially open, it will be partially uh, open. One of the important, uh, or the other type of the fracture, which is uh, induced by drilling operation and by drilling activity, which is the induced fractures. And the induced fracture, as I mentioned, it will be uh, this linear shape. Uh, so we have to uh, either uh, this inclined, or we call it, Chevron pattern shape like this one, or uh, linear shape. But the most important stuff that they are 100, uh, 180 degree apart. Uh, so we have line here and we have line here. And also if these fractures that happen along this line, it will happen along this line, which is 180 degree as mentioned. Maybe some joints can confuse you. Uh, because uh, we, we might have some joints like this one, but it's not 180 degree. In this case, it's natural joint. It's not, it's not uh, induced, but it will appear in a small part, but not 180 degree uh, apart like 
like uh, induced fracture. This is another uh, another example for induced fracture. It will happen here and here and here. So we have both types in this uh, in this snapshot. We have these uh, lines and we have these induced fracture, either vertical or chevron pattern or inclined pattern like this one. Here we have maybe you have combined or mixed case between drilling activity and natural fracture already. So we call this one drilling enhanced fracture. Sometimes you have this, this one is clearly induced fractures. This one is clearly induced fracture over here, over here. But if you look over here, you will find another type of fractures start uh, appear. This one, it was tight natural fractures and uh, I'm talking about this one. And this one, maybe I use another color. And this one, this one. So this fracture, this was small fracture, tight fracture, small fracture, and enhanced by uh, drilling operation. So we call this one as drilling enhanced fracture, enhanced by uh, drilling. So if we talk about induced fracture, we will talk, we, we will quickly talk about breakout. Breakout, uh, induced fracture, it happened because, because of, of tension, because of tension uh, along, uh, along the maximum, uh, th this one, the direction of maximum horizontal stress. So it's like tension here and the breakout appear in the opposite side. So by shear uh, failure, so this one is tensile failure by tensile failure, which we'll call this cracking, we call it induced fracture. And in, in the second direction, so this is direction of maximum horizontal stress, sigma max, and this is the direction of minimum horizontal stress, sigma min. So we will get breakout is an area, area of deformation, so like deformation area along the borehole, and the induced fracture, it's like vertical cracking, as you see here in the borehole. So this is the shape of the induced fracture. And this is the shape of the breakout. If, if we see the direction, we will see that the uh, borehole breakout is perpendicular to the uh, drilling induced fractures. So if the breakout occurred in this direction, the induced fracture will occur in the opposite direction. So this is a quick uh, plot for uh, for the direction for two opposite direction, one for induced fracture and the, the other one, the perpendicular one, uh, which is for uh, breakout. This is a breakout. This is another example for breakout is area, not line. Uh, induced the fracture. We talk about line. It was something like uh, like this one. But induced the fracture, it will be area. Uh, what we see here is uh, acoustic image. This is the acoustic image I have mentioned. Acoustic image. It, it's use uh, ultrasonic uh, to see. Uh, so it's by by sound wave, uh, not electrical. So it's very sensitive to any change in the borehole uh, shape, and also for cracking. This is natural fracture, uh, big from uh, ultrasonic image, and this is the breakout, uh, which is clearly here uh, in the radius image. Uh, you can see this area is breakout. Fracture aperture. Uh, fracture aperture is simply uh, the width of the fractures, the perpendicular width of the fracture. We call this one is fracture aperture. Uh, however, fracture aperture maybe it's not consistent along the uh, the fracture itself because of roughness and tightness in some uh, area. 
but the uh, the width the width the perpendicular width of the fracture we call it the fracture aperture the opening of the fracture itself we call it fracture aperture so to understand more here we can see like like we have different shapes of all these are con are fractures are open fractures but with different with, with different aperture and we have this one we have this one see the width of the fracture itself so we have if we, we end up by different widths of the fracture so this perpendicular width of the fracture we call it the fracture aperture what is the importance of the fracture aperture is to calculate uh, to see how how is how how the impact of these fracture if we have higher fracture aperture means we have more uh, fracture porosity and permeability and it, it will impact more on the production and if we have like small uh, fracture aperture which we will have less uh, porosity fracture porosity and permeability and less uh, production so how how this uh, fracture aperture is picked from the image or evaluated from the image it's simply because of the fracture is a weak plane along the rock which uh, which makes the mud flow uh, as we mentioned we have this flush zone or the mud will flow here in the fracture so which will make uh, this drop in the current or, or make the flow of the current so the current will be flow will be flow in this uh, in this weak uh, plane or this weak area because we have here fracture so mud will go inside so we'll have this electrical uh, signature for the mud because of uh, mud uh, will enter this uh, fracture then based on this uh, there will be equation uh, take the take many criteria uh, take the mud resistivity and some tool parameters and lens and lots of stuff to get the fracture so then we can from the image we can get grading for the aperture so from low uh, this one will be in millimeter from small one to higher one getting to dark means that we have some area it would be small aperture and the other area it will be high aperture so it will be grading from small millimeter to higher uh, or maybe micrometer to higher uh, millimeter so this is simply the equation uh, used in uh, uh, getting the fracture aperture uh, from uh, from the image for sure this is not the optimum uh, method for calculating the aperture because calculating aperture will have lots of factors uh, continuity of of uh, of the width itself the lateral extension of the fracture roughness of the fracture so all these criteria will impact the aperture but at least we can have uh, some uh, result and we can have we can correlate between an area uh, of fractures and another area of fractures based on this uh, technique so w will be fracture width arxo will be the uh, flushed zone resistivity and RM will be the mud resistivity, and this is the access current. Uh, also, based on the tool that we have, uh, will be some uh, values like C and B. So we can get the fracture aperture will be displayed in this scale in terms of millimeter. So as you will see, you will see in some areas the fracture, the aperture is high, and in some other area, the aperture uh, it, it low. And this is will depend on how how is this how how, how is the width of, of this fracture itself. Maybe along the same uh, fracture, the width might be uh, vary as mentioned. And as we see here, and someone is thick and someone is thinner. And, and in terms of width, someone is high width and someone is smaller, uh, and so on. That's why you will see someone uh, some fractures we would have uh, this higher aperture and another we will have smaller aperture and so on. And maybe يعني, uh, you can go to 
and check the fracture uh, by yourself. يعني, this is uh, one of the best method to evaluate the fractures. Go and uh, see it. Okay, to uh, summarize uh, the applications of the fractures. It comes in the first, the production uh, enhancement, uh, increasing porosity and permeability and in getting more uh, hydrocarbon, getting more uh, oil and gas. So this is the production enhancement. Now production enhancement positively, and also we can prevent some uh, if some fractures, it may contribute negatively. It may cause uh, enhancement. It may cause some uh, water. Uh, it may increase the water cut because some vertical fractures it can bring the water from a level to another level and increase the water cut in the, in the production. And also some tight fractures it act as a permeability barrier. So to, uh, maybe we, ha we need to avoid the fracture itself, not to drill inside the fractures. Maybe some tight fractures, it act as a permeability barrier. So you need to, we need to avoid this one because it, uh, it affects the permeability, not increase the permeability, it decreases the permeability. Uh, for sure, compilation uh, and uh, to set the, the, the pro properly uh, the compilation, uh, in front of, for example, if we have uh, uh, a good fractures, uh, contributing fractures, we, we, we will set the production uh, packers in, in uh, 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 suitable to this fracture areas and fracture zones. Also uh, for uh, fracking, uh, when we need fracking, so we need to study the fractures to uh, either natural fractures or the induced fractures to see how the orientation, uh, the preferred orientation for the fracking itself, and also to frack safely. Uh, so to understand the fracture, to see the direction of the fracture will be uh, very important. In modeling, um, fractures has lots of application also in, uh, in, mod in geochemical modeling. Uh, uh, even in an uh, in, in MEM or in mechanical earth model to understand the stresses, the maximum stress and minimum stress. And this is, we get the, we get the information from uh, the drilling induced fracture uh, to know the fast formation and the slow formation, to know uh, the recommended mud weight. So all this will be in the geomechanical modeling or to study the natural fracture itself and see how how the stress will be changed from an area to another area and how the tectonic uh, orientation, the tectonic uh, clustering will be changed from area to another area by studying the direction of these fracture corridors or these fracture clusters. Or having fracture model, يعني, and this all this will lead to uh, better uh, field development to study the fracture, uh, the area to see how the uh, fluid distribution and how the preferred fluid busways, when you study the fraction, the fracture direction in different uh, wells. So it makes you understand more about your field. And this is for sure will uh, help in, uh, in better field and better field development and field development uh, plan. Uh, mm, now, uh, I'm done. I'm sorry if I was uh, too long. I tried to 